dominating the city gates to Basra. Saddam Hussein and his henchmen still claim to control this southern port. But the British want to send a powerful symbolic message. Soldiers are here to tear down the regime and all it stands for. By the time they leave Iraq, their determined Saddam and his Ba'ath party will have bitten the dust. The approach can seem frustratingly slow, but day by day, the desert rats are exerting more control. Checkpoints meant to filter out Iraqi hardliners. They're well within striking distance of the mortars and rockets of the Fadaim militia, but they're prepared to take that risk to try and persuade the people of Basra that they won't desert them, that they'll stick with this however messy it gets. Drastic action is needed to convince a dubious population. Get down, get down. We watched a nighttime raid on the homes of Ba'ath Party officials and Fadaim militia. These are men singled out by locals and believed by army intelligence to be behind much of the brutality and corruption. Most are not accused of specific crimes, but suspected of being part of the state-sponsored climate of fear. Great, come on, get up! The party's influence extends to every corner of Iraqi society. In two small communities, we witness more than 70 people being rounded up. Some are clearly terrified of what lies ahead, uncertain of their fate, overcome by nerves. But as it ended, there was no British apology for the scale of the operation. We came in firm, we came in fair. There was no shots fired. We gave a, a good warning before we came in. We've been playing warnings for people to stay in their houses, and we've only lifted those people who we've got very good intelligence on. This is not a tactic that can be regularly repeated, or the British risk being accused of installing their own rule of terror. Despite the discomfort of a few, there's a conviction that this is a night's work that will benefit the majority.